Okay, welcome back. I'm about to start our third example on mathematical induction. Remember, here's my email. Feel free to email me with questions or maybe a problem you'd like me to solve. Alright, so here's today's question. It says, show that x minus 1 is always a factor of pn. And the pn is x to the n minus y to the n when n is greater or equal to 1. Alright, so a <clears throat> little different looking, different from the ones we had before, but always, always follow the three steps of mathematical induction. So the first one is to verify that x minus y, sorry, is a factor of pn for a specific integer. So this is our restriction. So we're going to pick an integer that fits within that restriction. And n is fine. So I mean 1 is fine for n. So we're going to use as a factor of pn when n is equal to 1. So we're going to prove that this is true. So p1 is x to the 1 minus y to the 1 and we just get x minus y. And it's pretty clear to see that x minus y is a factor of x minus y. So there's no doubt this is a factor, this is true, we can move on to our second step. So our, our second step is to assume that pk or assume that x minus y is a factor of pk and pk is and remember and you should remember by now we've done quite a few examples you simply replace n with k for pk because we've verified for one integer now we're going to assume that it, this is valid for all integers of k so x to the k minus y to the k, where k is greater or equal to 1. Now our last step is to prove, prove that x minus y is a factor of not only pk, but the integer after pk, so pk plus 1. When k is greater or equal to 1. So same thing, now we're going to replace n with k plus 1. So let's do that. So pk plus 1 is and it's never equal to. I don't know if I mentioned that in other videos, but it's not equal. It's a proposition or a statement, so you never put the equal sign here. So x k plus 1 minus y k plus 1. And that's our proposition. And k is greater or equal to 1. Alright, so you might be looking at this and you're like, what do we do? What can we do with this? You don't really see any other way to go about it. Okay, but I see one thing we can do right off the bat. Uh, we have these plus ones up here and we can definitely break this down a bit so to give us a little more room to play with, let's say. And I actually put up, made this sheets beforehand to kind of show you what I'm talking about if you don't know what I'm saying. So just consider this for now and if you're if you're good at math, you probably already know this, just ignore this or fast forward or whatever, but you agree that 5 times 5 is equal to 5 squared, which is the same thing as 25, right? So 5 times 5 is equal to 25, and 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. Well, how did you get this 5 squared? Obviously, you had to get it from somewhere. It didn't just pop there and, oh yeah, okay, that works. No, okay. Every number or every variable, sorry, I didn't read this. I'll read this first. When you multiply the same number and or variable together, you add their exponents together. So if you didn't know, but every number and a variable, although there's no exponent here or here, 
there is one, we just don't write it down because it's assumed when it's one. So this is actually five to the one and times five to the one. And what you do when you multiply them, you add their exponents together. So that's what we're doing here. We're doing five to the one plus one. We're adding these two exponents together, which gives us five to the two, which is the same thing as 25. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in our problem. We have k plus one, but that one was multiplied from this, right? It was x to the one times xk, which is just k plus one, because we add their exponents. So I hope that makes sense now, because we're going to be using this. So let's go back to our problem, and we see that we can break this down that way. So we're going to have x times xk minus y times yk. All right, so now we're looking at this. What do we do? Okay, you might remember in our, my other videos, you always want to factor pk. So we go back to pk, we're looking at it, and we look at our problem, and we're like, okay, there's no way I can factor this. Um, does this not work? Is, is this not true? Can I not do this? Okay, well, you don't give up just yet. There's actually one more thing you can do for this problem, which you might not have thought of, but it's called al algebraic freedom, which is another little side note I made here. So what algebraic freedom is, is that you can add or subtract any number from an expression. Okay, so let me prove that to you. So, or what does that mean? So consider the statement 5 equals to 5. Pretty obvious, I hope everyone agrees with that. Well, you could also write it in this way. You could write 5 plus 3 minus 3 equals to 5 because when you take plus 3 minus 3, it equals to 0. So essentially, this whole part here, you're just adding 0 to 5, which is still 5. So you can take any term, as long as you add it and subtract it, you can add it to your term. So that's what we're going to do here. And this is why mathematical, in mathematical induction can get a bit tricky, is because it's not very clear or it's sometimes ambiguous as to what you have to do next but sometimes you have to add terms so that you can continue. So I'm not gonna sit here and ponder as to what term I have to add, I already know, but if you have a problem in a test or an exam where you have to, you don't know what to do, you can't go anywhere else, think of terms you can add so that you can get this PK and factor it out of these terms, okay? So to do that here, we have to add x, y, k, and we have to subtract x, y, k. And we add and subtract because together this would equal zero, so technically we're not changing anything. But now that we have this, we can actually factor p, k out of this, and let me show you how. So we're going to do x, we're going to take x out, and then we're going to take x, k from here, right? So x times x, k, and then we're going to take the x from here, and we're going to take out the minus yk and put that in there. And you can see right here we have pk, which is great. So now we're going to factor out the rest of this and see what we get. So from the second half we're going to get plus yk <coughs> from right here, and then we're going to put the x here from there, and then we have the minus y left here, so we get minus y. Okay, so what's so great about this is that because we assume pk is true, we already assume that it has a factor of x minus y. So because we got pk here, we already know that this has a factor of x minus y. So this part, this whole part right here is already done. So now we just have to consider this part right here. What's going on here? What do we do with this? Well, this is also very easy because as you can see, the factor we're looking for, x minus y, is right there as well. So we also know that this has a factor of x minus y. So our whole statement we, know, we now know has a factor of x minus y, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now we conclude, we can conclude by PMI, or the principle of mathematical induction, that 
x minus y is, in fact, a factor of <coughs> pk, or not pk, remember, it's not pk plus 1, it's not pk, it's pn, because that's what you're trying to prove initially. It's pn um, is, in fact, a factor of pn when n is greater or equal to 1. And that's it. Okay, so I might have made this seem very easy, and it is, and in another way it's not, okay? But all you have to remember is that you're always going to be using your pk. You assume it for a reason, and you want to find it in your pk plus 1, okay? So always develop what you have, either simplify it or break it down, and see if you can factor it out, and if you can't factor it out, you have to add and subtract, add, subtract the same term so that you can factor out your pk. And the other section should just fall into place and you should see that you have the same factor or something so that it works out nicely. Okay, so that's what you have to take away from this. Um, if you have any questions about this or want to suggest a problem you want me to do or something, uh, just email me here. And uh, sorry about the long video, and I'll be doing some other questions. All right, thanks.